Welcome everyone to Hope Lives Here. This is Apostle Dolores Kendrick. And yes, this is Monday morning. We have made some changes. But I just want to welcome everyone um, to Hope Lives Here, uh, Tabernacle of Praise Church. And we're located in the Pacific Northwest where it is a little chilly right now, but uh, in Washington State. And it's just a really beautiful, beautiful morning because this is the day that the Lord has made. So we're excited and you say, well, why are we coming on Monday morning? I shared with you previously that we were changing from uh, Tuesday and Thursday afternoon and we will be coming to you Monday morning, just starting your week out and with the word of the Lord and just encouraging you and just giving you hope for the week and you say well why the change well let's look around us everything is changing and uh, when we think about it you say well i want the i want the hope lives here on tuesdays and thursdays but look you can go to our website www.tabernaclepraisechurch.net and you can get over 280 episodes you can watch these episodes anytime you want to because one thing about the word of the Lord, we know that the word of the Lord is it standeth sure. The anointing is captured in the word and the word never changes. And so we we want to be able to give you that opportunity where you can go. But we have made a change and we will be coming on Monday morning twice a month and uh, every other Monday and just uh, being a blessing to you. When we think about how we started just about two years ago uh, with Hope Lives Here, and it has blessed a lot of people, many people that have just called in and shared that what it has been, it's been a blessing to them. And so we want to continue it, uh, but we are in a time of change. And we felt the Lord just said, well, just turn the corner, just do something different. And um, you say, well, why is that? Because I know some people just do not like change. It's like we get stuck, isn't it? And we, we get comfortable in what we're doing. But God is a God of change. His word doesn't change, but God changes. He changes and we see what is happening in our world. Our nation is changing. Businesses are changing. Uh, we're seeing just change all around us. And many times if we don't change, if we don't get in the flow of change, we find ourselves on the outside. So we, this day, today, I just want to talk to you this morning rather about change. Uh, and yes, I know you don't like changes, but I told you, many of you that have heard me share uh, my testimony, I love change because I don't even like to go the same way home all the time. I love to uh, just go different ways. And But one thing that I had a little uh, fight with in change is um, the after Christmas, I generally, uh, make changes you know we get rid of all the christmas um, decorations and of course we decorate and we have our beddings christmas beddings and so forth and we get rid of all that well i wanted to uh the spring because spring will be here in two weeks march 20th will be springtime. And at that time, I generally go through my closets and clean out and get rid of a lot of things that I haven't worn, a little lot of things in the kitchen area and just in the home that you have not used and you know that you're not going to use it. So you want to get rid of it. And so this was a difficult thing for me because even though I knew I wanted to get rid of these things and just move out, you know, and take to the goodwill, take to the dump and all. It was hard for me to 
get that day that I would do it, I kept saying, well, tomorrow I'll do it. Have you been there? Tomorrow I'll do this. And I'd get up and I'd say, okay, I'm going to um, clean out and get rid of clothes and take them. And then that day would come and I'd get distracted and something else would take place. And it just kept being tomorrow until finally I said, this doesn't make sense. I set my priorities and I got up and I said, today is the day. And I went in and I just began to clean out closets, clean out and just pack things away. And you know, that was a good feeling of accomplishments. Uh, just to, to do that, and I just encourage you, just to uh, not get stuck. Sometime is comfortable. And have you ever felt like you've been stuck, like in a rut, you know, and, um, I think of a vehicle, you know, that gets stuck in the mud and um, keeps spinning, keeps spinning the wheels, just keep accelerating and you keep spinning the wheels. You're not going forward, you're not going backwards. So if you're not going forward or backwards, you know you're going down. And we get stuck in a rut where we do not want to do anything. We get, sometimes we don't want to change because we fear change. Uh, we don't know what we're gonna to change to. Sometimes we don't wanna change because we don't want to go through what it takes to change, okay? And so um, we need to take that step of faith. Uh, three weeks ago, Deborah ministered on a Sunday morning and her message was, take a risk. And we know that that is take a step of faith. And just to quote uh, her, she did not mean that you're just going to jump off a cliff, as she quoted, as she said, but you're going to take a risk on that which lines up with what God has said or called you to do. Let me say that again. Take a risk on that which lines up with what God has said or called you to do. And that is so true. You know, we do not want to just jump off a cliff or do something or even uh, move just uh, uh, not thinking or not praying or not being directed by God. But we want to move. There are certain times that change is necessary. We look at the earth and uh, spring is here in two weeks and we're going to see some things happen. And isn't it, isn't it funny that the earth recognizes the cycle of change, the change in the seasons. And even though it might snow, even though it might be cold and rainy, something happens to the plants under the earth. They begin to pop up because they know it's, not, they know it's spring. They know it's springtime. So in a few weeks, we're going to see uh, the primroses popping up. You're going to see some crocus coming up because it's spring. Why is it that the earth can move in that, um, that, that cycle of change, and yet it is so hard for us to change. Let me share something with you. It could be as simple as changing your jobs, changing um, your thinking, okay? Changing um, the way you do things, uh, but doing it, make it a step to do it. Proverbs uh, 6 4 to 14, and I'm not going to read all of it, but I just want to read that fourth verse. It says, don't put off, do it now. Don't rest until you do. In other words, we need to make a decision and set our priorities, right? And we need to do this. I got up and said, okay, I'm going to do this now. And I did it, but I had put off, put off, put off. And sometimes we put off too long. Sometimes we stay in a situation because we believe there's nothing else out there. 
and it's a poor excuse really to get stuck where uh you know somewhere because you don't think there are other alternatives but there's always other alternatives we get stuck on jobs that we don't even like there are sometimes we have problems in our body and we have uh, problems headaches and and stomach aches and we don't even realize that it's because we're stressed out and we're in places that maybe we should have made changes a long time ago. But again, we seek God. We look to God for what we call the green light. The green light. Sometimes we have to wait. And we've been in a waiting period, you know, um, as the body of Christ have been in a waiting period for a certain time. But when that season of change came where we are embracing this new era of change. God has spoken it to us. So we know that we can get his approval, which is very necessary. We can get his approval that we can change. Some people are miserable where they are. And it's all because that they need to hear from God. So I want to talk to you about hearing. Hearing and listening. I say oftentimes we hear. Yes, we hear. But to really listen, you hear my voice right now. You hear words coming out of my mouth. But are you listening? Are you listening to what I am saying? And that's a big difference, you know, because when you listen, you're going to obey. When you listen, you're going to follow what that word says. And so we, um, you know, we want to get... Um, we want to get God's approval. Uh, we want to open up ourselves uh, to chance and uh, where we can explore different opportunities. This year is the beginning of a new era. This, I guarantee, will be the experience of a lifetime. Beginning of a new era. Listen, talk to the Lord, listen for the timing of God, listen, pray that God will give you an ear, an ear, a spiritual ear to hear what he is saying, that he will give you a discernment that you will know what he wants at the time he wants it. And he will do that for you. He will direct you in the way that he would have you to go and he'll shine a light and that light is symbolic of truth and he will give you the truth regarding a thing. <clears throat> so when we uh, think about our lives we sometimes find ourselves in a place of look like going around the same mountain over and over and over. I think about <clears throat> Israel when they were in Egypt and I think about how um, God raised up a man, uh, which was Moses, to go and free the children. Now, those children of Israel was in that state, in that rut, in that pattern, in that bondage, in that slavery for years. And it was like the green light was on them and not the green light, excuse me, the red light, where nothing moves. You just stop. You just stand still. And you don't move. And God had them there for a time. And sometimes when the Lord says, okay, this is the red light, uh, I want you to seek me. Seek me to move to the next. Now, when they were in, when they were in, is, in Egypt, 
a place of bondage. Moses come. He says, let my people go. We know the story. So here God releases them and turn on a green light for them to move forward. They can go out of bondage and move forward. They can pursue to a land that is flowing with milk and honey. And so God put the green light on them. Moses led them out. But I want you to watch this. Sometimes there's a caution light. And as they were moving, God brings a, that orange light, that caution light. Uh, Sometimes when we're driving and we see the caution, we see the cones and all that's telling us to slow down, telling us to slow down because there could be construction up ahead. There could be an accident uh, before us. There could be uh, something that we could be hurt from. So we detour. We detour to go around uh, the particular thing that we, it's a caution, a caution. God is saying, slow down. Sometimes he does that in our lives. With Israel, he did that. They had to detour, go around the long way around. Why was this? Because first of all, they weren't skilled in fighting. They were not a, uh, they had been in bondage. They didn't even have weapons to fight. And the enemy was along that path where they were going. So the Lord just directed them the long way around. And sometimes when we have to detour and go the long way around, we think that God has left us. We think that the thing is stopped that we cannot have. Why would God tell me to pursue and then all of a sudden I have to slow up and I'm going away from what I thought that he was leading me to. And Israel came around and here they come to another place that seemed like it's impossible. And it is a Red Sea, a sea that is impossible for them to cross, saints. And that's sometimes the way it is with us. The Lord leads us on our pathway to that particular destiny that we are seeking. And we go around only to come to another place that is impossible. Now, when you get to that place of impossibilities, that's where your miracle is. That's where you need to use the word of God, the declaration, the praise and say, God, I am going forward. Now I'm getting ready to take a risk. Now I'm getting ready to step out by faith because the children of Israel, <clears throat> when they got there, here the enemies behind them. But look at what God had did. <clears throat> they were loaded with treasures. They had borrowed and gotten everything from Egypt that they needed. In other words, they were wealthy people now, but now they're at a place that it's not going to do them any good, they thought. But this is where God has said, okay, this seems like a stopping for you. But now I'm going to give you the green light to take a step of faith. Moses, stretch out the rod of authority. The rod always symbolizes authority. And he went forth and the seas began to part. That's where your miracle is. Don't be discouraged when you come to those places where it seems like you're stopping. And God, you just opened the door for me. And here I start out and then I have to go slow and the thing doesn't happen. And then I come to a place where it seems utterly impossible. In 2023, you are going to allow God to be God in your life. And there's going to be some Red Seas open. But look at what happened to the children of Israel. When they went across, the, of course, we know the story how Pharaoh's army was coming across and the waters receded. They came back and drowned every one of them. But look at Israel. Their debt was drowned in the Red Sea. In other words, when they came across, they were debt free, totally debt free. I declare in this year, you're going to see some debt free come to you. You're going to see the hand of God move in such a mighty way for you that is going to blow your mind. Amen. So you keep praising God, keep believing God, and I'll see you next 
Monday after next. God bless you.